Hey, welcome to Tough Guys. A new episode here. It's going to be an expansion onto the video about the sink supply and drain that we did previously. And this one's going to just go into detail about the disposal itself. So if you wanted to check out the sink supply and the drain in more detail, then check out the other video. But this one's going to focus on the disposal that we decided to go with. So let me show you which one we decided on and a little bit about it and then get into the installation. All right, and here's a quick overview of the Insincorator um, Evolution Select. It's the one that we decided to go with here. A couple quick notes. This is the box that it comes in. Uh, we picked this in particular version because it's a little bit quieter and it's a little bit smaller, you know, height-wise, and we've got a limited space underneath the sink down here, so. This box is what comes with the unit. So you get a few accessories. This is to unjam it. You've got your, you know, the piece we were walking around showing how that hooks up bolts to hook this uh, drain flange on but what you don't get is you don't get a dishwasher connection kit in case your dishwasher is a little bit different and oddly enough you don't get a power supply cord i'm not really sure why they don't include that in the box but so be ready to get uh, those two items if you need them uh, to get this thing installed correctly in your sink and then also uh, the last thing is they actually do give you an a pvc extension so this is actually really helpful. I might already picked one of these up in a different assembly, but if you didn't have it, you will have it with this kit. So that's the Insincorator uh, Evolution Select, and that's the one we're gonna be going with. Okay, so let's get the electrical hooked up for the disposal. So this is the kit that we bought, the power cord kit, and let me show you how this goes together. So the first thing you want to do is take off the little plate on the bottom, set that to the side, and then down inside of here, you're going to have your uh, power and neutral connections as well as a ground, and then a little hole there to run the wire through. So this is your little connector to go through the hole. I mean, some people just put the wire through there, but you can put this in to help keep things secure. And I find it easier to feed the cable through uh, prior to hooking up the conduit piece because then it's a little bit easier to get the cable through there without having to go through this extended bit. And then once I get it through there, you can take the locking nut part and feed it on. And actually this one in this particular case, it's actually threaded on the bottom. So I'm just gonna leave this piece off cause this is already in there. And notice this bit here has the guard on it. So we want that to be exposed when we tighten this part down onto that wire. And now that's nice and secured in place. Uh, you clean up these frayed copper, just give them a twist with your hands. If you don't do this often, it can be a little bit tough on your fingers, so look out for that. Um, the ground has a little looped connection that's already on it there. So we want to go ahead and take the ground screw out. Be careful not to drop it down inside of the disposal. Feed it through there first. Line it up where you need it to go. Screw it down. That part's done. Now the last two here, go ahead and get these uh, hooked up. And if you have one that's more solid than stranded, I generally feed it into the wire nut first, but if you wanted to, you can get these guys together real tight, feed them in, make sure they're seated well before you start to twist. And I generally twist it until the cords start to wrap up a little bit together. I know that that's a good connection. And there you go. So I'm gonna put all this stuff back inside the bottom of this guy. And there's our little plate that covers that up. And again, I don't know why they don't include the power cable inside the box. 
It's kind of a weird thing, but that's how you put one in. All right, as we get ready to install the drain flange into the sink, I wanted to show you a little bit about getting it prepped. So I just use um, a Lysol wipe that we had here at the house. And you wanna get the area as clean as you can, especially where the flange is gonna attach. So just get that cleaned. Make sure you don't have any oily residue or anything built up. You know, you most likely didn't build your sink yourself from scratch, so it came from a factory which could have had various people, you know, touching it and getting handled when it gets moved. So just try to get it clean before you start the next install. And here's a quick overview of the flange assembly that came with this sink. So this is just a locking ring, which I'll show you in just a sec. So basically what you have is you have a few different parts that all fit together. So this is the actual flange itself. And it would actually be the piece that you see when it's, when it's in there. You'd see this part sticking up on this side. So on the bottom side of that thing, when it goes through the sink, they give you this little uh, paper washer. And then this piece would go on after that, which is basically trapping the two around your sink. So imagine my finger there is the sink thickness, and you've got the washer, and then you've got the metal uh, locking ring. And then this piece goes on this way, and it uses these screws to uh, hold tension down to the underside of the sink. The locking ring comes into play here where it would actually fit on, and I'm not gonna put it on there because you, you have to break it back off. You kind of see as it expands and will go around there and it will actually hold this piece on the bottom. And what it does is this piece, these little rings here, is what allows it to lock onto the, the disposal locks onto the bottom of it and hangs from the bottom of your sink. So that's how that part works. Now for us, because we have a uh, thick sink, as you can tell, we actually had to order an extra part, which does not come with this in the box. So this thing is like an extra $55. If you can see here, it's quite a bit thicker than the other. And the reason for that is because the thickness of the sink is, is thick enough to where when you're using the smaller flange, you can't get all the components on there and the locking ring, it just pops off from all the tension. So if you have a sink like this and not a steel or a copper sink, you're gonna have to buy one of these. The other thing I found is that, at least in our area here in North Texas, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, nobody carries this thing in stock. So we had to order it from Amazon. It took a couple days to get here and like I said, $55. So this is the one we're gonna use for the install. Okay, to show you the part here with the plumber's putty. So uh, a few bucks for one of these at Home Depot or any various hardware store. And let's see what we got. So kind of work a piece out of this. It's very similar to the consistency of something like Play-Doh. Um, it's actually very close, a little bit stickier to the touch, but what you want to do is when they say they want that half inch uh, roll, they want that to kind of go around the underside of the flange. So it's, it's quite sticky. If you just start working it around, you'll be able to uh, get a nice ring around there. I'm not going to measure this to see if it's exactly uh, one half inch. I'm just going to kind of look to make sure I've got an an even distribution. They're kind of wanting to make sure that you've got a consistent seal. And some of this stuff actually works its way into the edge around here, and then the rest will kind of smash out around the base of where the flange actually fits into your sink. So that is how the plumber's putty goes on there. And if you were a little bit OCD, when you press this in, make sure you've got your wording lined up. So get it in place. And you just want to press it down to lock it in. And this stuff is going to, it's going to squeeze out. That's completely normal. So get it pressed before you go to the underside of the sink to work it on from the bottom. And here's a quick up close just to show you how that plumber's putty kind of squishes out around the edges. And we'll get this stuff cleaned up uh, before we move on. But I just wanted to show you a more up close uh, image of that. All right, I'm here with my certified instruction holder and helper. This is Memphis, he's my son. He's gonna be helping us with the install here for the disposal, so you ready to get started? You wanna say hello to everybody? Hello, I have a sticker. 
first thing that we want to put in is that that paper washer that they mentioned. I'm going to slide that on. And notice we're using the extended flange here. The other one would have only stuck out about an inch, give or take, which is not enough. The next piece that goes in place is the metal locking ring. And the next piece, this one here with the screws, which has the flange that would allow you to mount your dishwasher. Not dishwasher, disposal. Maybe I'll put a counter on here to see how many times I say dishwasher instead of disposal. That might be a fun game. So then this is the that locking, locking disc. So we want to put this on there. Now, when I tighten these screws, that's what will press this piece up and tighten the whole thing together. And at the same time, it's going to pull down on the locking ring in order to spread this apart which in turn pulls the flange down to the top side of the sink. So Memphis, hand me that screwdriver, man. Reach it up in here, all the way. There we go, thanks buddy. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is get these screws tightened up. So let's go for that. Okay, I just wanted to show that we've got this thing screwed in. And if you look really close, there's little, little uh, notches on that locking ring and you wanna make sure that those are in there completely. That way it's locked in and, and this thing is, is not gonna move once that's the case. So very limited here, but I wanted to show you all uh, how we've got that done. And my helpers are here. And Hank, the dog. And this is what uh, this is what you deal with when you're doing a remodel in your house and you have two kids and a giant dog. All right, the next part is actually in the instructions as well. And I wanted to show you all how you do this because it's something you could very easily miss. So they put a plug inside of the dishwasher uh, drain inlet and it'd be super easy to forget to pop that out. So I realized that it shows, do not use a screwdriver. Uh, ironically, that's what I use, but let me show you how I do it. Here is that that piece right here and let's see here kind of get a good view you can see that plastic plug in there um, that is in there so what I do is um, I do have a screwdriver that we use but you just if you have one of these type where you can take out the end it works really well it's not gonna puncture or hurt anything when you when you pop it in there alternatively use something else that doesn't have a sharp point okay so I take that piece off, the headpiece of the screwdriver, and I just use that metal, the metal part there. And you can use hammers or just whatever you have around. And it pops out pretty easy. That piece will knock down inside of there, and then you just fish that out of there, and then you're good to go for the for the dishwasher drain connection. Um, the larger connection, uh, there's nothing in the way there. That's your drain. And just to show you the pieces that come out of this, um, mine did not come out clean, so that is the type of just rough plastic that is knocked out of there when you use that that screwdriver to knock that out. So sometimes it'll come out clean and then it's a lot easier to get those pieces out, but I had to kind of fish them out of the inside. So take notice of that. All right, moment of truth here. We're gonna lift this thing up and get it mounted underneath. And the goal is to line this up. All right, we want to get it lined up to where the direction of the drain is actually facing the direction that we're going to be coming down into our sink assembly. All right, so the first step is this piece here is your piece that hooks into the disposal and comes down and connects to your uh, S-trap or J-trap, whatever you're using here to hook into your sink drain. So this is the guy that we need for right now. So this piece here also comes with a locking ring and this little thing is just squeezed to loosen and what that is is it's gonna it's gonna hook onto this loose piece here so you want to feed it on first kind of get it ready to go and then as we get this in there 
Let's see if I can get this on the shot without blocking it for y'all. So we're gonna cheat a little bit, and I'm gonna grab onto this thing with the channel locks, and it's gonna make my life a lot easier. Trusty channel locks, can't go wrong there. Lots of uses. Okay, so we've got the plumbing drain pipe cut down for size here to fit on. But before we put this on there, if you notice there's some threads. So the first thing we need to feed on is the locking nut and the washer that goes with that. So you want the skinny side facing down towards the end of your pipe. Oh, I'm gonna put the, put the nut on first. And that will hold that on there while you get the next part ready. Just like that. And you can see the washers on there. Same with up at the top. So prior to getting everything uh, screwed together, this is what we're looking like. All right, so the last piece of the puzzle to connect your dishwasher supply hose here, um, you wanna connect that over to the part that sticks out of the disposal. And this one in particular is a little bit loose. So it goes on there, but it's a little bit loose, even with a clamp, I'm not a big fan of that. So they do make uh, these adapters and what they'll come with is a couple of various types of, of locking uh, locking rings or sometimes pieces like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on there first because this thing gets a really nice uh, seal. Alright after some trial and error I ended up taking off the adapter piece. It just made it too long and it created a pinch point here. So I removed that and after trimming this pipe down a little bit I was able to get this uh, back on real nice and tight. And I feel real confident that that's a good seal. So we'll test it out and everything, but just kind of a view there. Um, I didn't have a lot of slack on the dishwasher line either. So I think that was contributing to this being added on and then creating a, a bad tension point there where they, where they gap together. So uh, we're gonna go with this. And lastly, down here under the sink, uh, before we head up top to fill up the sink and test out the drain, give you guys a good overview of how everything is tied in. We've got that locking ring nice and tight on there. I feel very confident in this thing. It feels great. Um, we've got the drain coming out of the disposal, the locking ring in place, comes down to the drain that hooks into the sink. Uh, for a detailed video on this, uh, we did a separate video that we'll be posting that shows um, hooking everything up here. And if we can squeeze in, you can see how that locks on up here. So there's a little lip there that hooks around the upper section. And you can see those bolts go up to press in the bottom of the sink and there's a little bit of that paper washer. So I am definitely, definitely, definitely ready to get out from underneath this sink. <laughs> so let's go up top and, and take a look at what we have going on. Oh, it feels good to stand up after being on the floor for so long. So let's see if we can dig into this sink and figure out if we can make sure it's not leaking. Okay, so here you can see the leftover plumber's putty that kind of presses out when you are putting that connection together. Um, the stuff normally comes off pretty easy. See, so it just kind of peels off there. And that is what you should be left with when you're finished up, a nice clean edge. Um, if you have one of those Lysol wipes left over, give this thing a quick, a quick wipe down. But basically, that is what you should be left with. Um, these insincorators will come with a piece that you can uh, load down in inside, which is just your little your little protector that keeps you from you know seeing down inside the disposal all the time and all the stuff that goes with it. And then generally your sink would have something uh, like this. In our case, this thing is a little bit small, so we'll have to pick up something uh, different to use if we want to use one of these stoppers. But with it being a single bowl and having the disposal hooked in you're just going to be putting everything down there. So we're going to try running the sink and I need to find the stopper, which should be this one. So we want to try to 
uh, get some water here in the sink, make sure it can hold water, and then we'll come right back. All right, that is a good amount of water, so we're gonna shut this off, and let's go take a look underneath and see if we can see any leaks happening. All right, come with me on a journey back under the sink forever. And we can take a look here. And with that thing holding water, I do not see any indication of issue right now. And it's holding water. So let's let this drain and we'll check the same thing. looks like preliminary we might have what they call success all right last step we've got this thing hooked up to power um there's that nifty power cord that they're kind enough not to include in the box for you um, over here these are some cord whips that again on the the video of us hooking up all the plumbing we'll show you why we did that uh, it makes it very convenient here and then up on the top we don't have our backsplash in but uh, my wife is going to turn on the switch and make sure it doesn't work. Sounds like it's working. All right, thanks everybody for watching this video on hooking up this uh, Insincorator disposal. It was fun at times, struggling at other times, but still a really good experience and hopefully it helped you guys on your own DIY uh, adventure hooking one of these things up. So channel lock plug, get some if you don't have some. And if you love our video, like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notifications um, that way you can get notified when we post new videos up uh, we're gonna try to get everything set up on this new Instagram TV and try to post some videos there as well but um, YouTube's gonna be where we are so uh, any support and love and, and leave comments let us know how we did and if you think we did anything crazy let us know that too uh, but anyways thanks for watching and see you guys when we start the next project mm -hmm.